It's called The Selfie Vote, where millennials are leading America and how Republicans can keep up. Kristen, thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. What are the misconceptions you think that millennials have in general about Republicans? So millennials tend to, when you talk to them in focus group settings, they'll say, look, I think Republicans are kind of of the past. They're old fashioned. They're not up to the times. They're not as tech savvy. They maybe aren't as good on things like race and diversity. They're not as socially progressive. Um, so you know, they don't view Republicans as being in tune with where their generation is at. Is that totally a misconception, or the book argues to some extent there's some truth to something? So I try to argue that Republicans have not done themselves any favors. Republicans love to make kind of the same arguments that we've been making, whether it's on economics or cultural issues, that we've been making for the last few decades. And many of them kind of fall flat with this new generation that gets information in a different way, that trusts different sources, um, and that just kind of has a, has a different value set. Um, so I think that Republicans don't necessarily need to change everything that they believe in, but they need to start figuring out how how their policy ideas and overall principles can be applied to 21st century problems so, that millennials are so facing. So give me a concrete example of that. Uber, for instance, where you had the private sector come in and kind of solve a problem where public sector, you know, public transportation systems in cities weren't weren't working so well. Um, here, this is the market solving a problem, providing better services, and doing it with efficiency and a level of service that you're just not getting from the government. Right. Republicans right. should talk about this as the sort of success story. All right, so let's uh, tick off our favorite do's and don'ts on how Republicans should reach out to millennials. Let's start with the do's. Uh, so do make sure that you are trying to reach them where they're at. Um, a lot of Republicans focus on big broadcast TV buys. That's what eats up most of your campaign budget, surely. Um, but young people aren't watching, you know, the network nightly news anymore. They're getting their news from digital sources, social media, sharing with friends. Make sure that you're making that a priority. You're reaching them where they are. Give me a don't. Um, don't just talk about shrinking government. I've been in focus groups where I've talked about the concept of big government, and pe young people don't know what big government means as a term. Right. We in politics know that it's a shorthand for shrinking bureaucracy, but shrinking government isn't an end in and of itself that a lot of young people are excited yeah. about. So the government could be a band name. It <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going I'm to read you a list of things, and you tell me, like, in one sentence, where's the opening for the Republicans in that area to okay. reach millennials? All right, Candy Crush. There are advertising opportunities within these games. You've got people's attention. You've got a captive audience. You may as well use it. All right, education. Don't just focus on debt management policy. Focus on disrupting the status quo of what higher education looks like. Let people get skills in any way they can. Republican opportunity to reach millennials with Snapchat. <laughs> be authentic, be funny, show them that you're not the monster that they some that the media sometimes portrays Republicans to be. All right, justice reform. Use this as an opportunity to show that you understand that we have not yet achieved racial equality in America and we need to do more to make sure we're allowing equality to occur. All right. Where is there an opportunity on marriage equity? To say, you know what, the Supreme Court has ruled and that's now the law, so let's take a look at how we can be respectful of others um, and not have this become the political hot button that it's always been. So a lot of Republican voters and conservatives care about foreign policy in the context of the next election. Is that an opportunity for Republicans to reach millennials? I think it is. And I it's intentionally try to shy away from making too many strong pronouncements about foreign policy in the polls because it can change in the blink of an eye if something goes wrong in Iran, et cetera, et cetera. But I think you have the older millennials who are more hesitant about robust American engagement overseas. They remember the Iraq war a little bit more. They're more hesitant on that front. The younger millennials, they're coming of age in an era of ISIS, where they're, they're really feeling sort of threatened and under siege. And the polling suggests they're more in favor of a robust, bigger military um, and more foreign engagement.